Okay, here is another problem uh, that's great for classical, mecha classical mechanics because you can solve it multiple ways. But the other nice thing about this is that if you're in your introductory physics class first semester uh, towards the middle two-thirds of the way through, you could probably solve this problem. And I like that. So here's this situation. I have this wedge. It has a mass M2. And I have a block sitting on the wedge. And I let it go. And there's no friction. There's no friction between these two. And there's no friction between the wedge and the ground. So everything can move. And so as this happens, what's going to it's going to slide down and it's a perfectly transition. There's no bumping or anything like that at the end. But at the end, I think it's okay to imagine that this block will speed up, but since this wedge can move, it's going to move too. So I'm going to get this. And they're moving apart. And so the question is, well, how fast do they move? And if and if it, if we need it, this is an angle of theta. This is a height h. We can use those if we want to. So how do we do this problem? Well, let's give some numbers. Let's give some uh, some some uh, variables here. Let's call let's just call this v1, and let's call this v2. I'm going to use scalar values. Um, and I'm going to assume that this starts from rest. Okay, so I don't need those. And if I just call this v1, it'll be the velocity of mass 1 at the end, and v2 the velocity of v t uh, mass 2 at the end, too. Um, and let's just, let's just do it. I mean, if, if you think about this, the first thing that I think of seeing this is that, well, up here, the momentum in the x direction is 0. So over here, the momentum in the x direction is 0. So if I include the system of the block plus a wedge, then f net x external equals 0. That means delta p x equals 0. That means the initial momentum of 0 is equal to the final momentum. So I can write this. Initial momentum of 0 in the x direction is going to be m1 v1 minus m2 v2. So I know that has to be true. Okay. So I, I I don't, I mean, I want to get an expression for both these velocities. I have m1 and m2, um, but I have two variables, so I can't really, I could solve this, and but it doesn't really tell me much. Okay, the other thing I know is that if this thing is moving down the incline, it's going to increase in speed until it gets down here. Okay, so could I find the speed? Well, kind of, right? Because I'd have to find the speed of both of these things. But I do know that I can make another system. This is my momentum system. I can have an energy system and say the system block plus wedge. And when I say wedge, I always think of wedge from Star, Star Wars, and I don't know why, but that's just what I'm thinking, plus uh, the Earth. So now I can say work is the change in energy. And if I include the Earth as my system, there's no external forces, so I will have potential energy. So it's going to be delta K1 plus delta K2 plus delta U1. Right. The, the mass 2 does not change in potential energy because it doesn't move up and down. The center mass doesn't move. So I don't need to do, deal with that. Okay. So there's no work done. So that's 0. So let's just write this out. I know that uh, the final... The initial kinetic energy is 1 and 2 is 0, so I get 0 equals k1 final, 1 half m1, oops, that's a 1, v1 squared minus 0 plus k2 final, so it's going to be plus 1 half m2 v2 squared minus 0 because it started the rest. Uh, now for the potential energy, I'm going to say uh, the center of mass of this is y equals 0. So the final potential here is going to be 0. So it's going to be plus 0 minus initial, which is just going to be minus m1gh. And so I'm going to keep that parameter in there. But here you see something nice. I have this equation with v1 and v2. I have this equation with v1 and v2. So I have two equations to unknowns. So let's solve this one for v1. v1 is going to be equal to m2 v2 over m1. 
right? So what I, I what I did was I added this to both sides and then I divided by M1 to get that. And I skipped some steps, but I figure we're all adults here, or at least I like to pretend like I'm one. Um, sometimes I pretend like I'm not. Okay, so now I have V1, I can plug it in down here. So I get, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, no, I'm not, let's just plug it in. Zero equals one half M1. V1 squared is gonna be this. So it's gonna be M2 squared v2 squared over m1 squared and then I have plus one half m2 v2 squared and then I have minus m1 g h now I want to solve for v2 squared so I'm going to add this to both sides and and factor out the v2 so I get m1 g h equals v2 squared times now right here I have m1 m2 squared over m1 squared so this is going to be and I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 so I get rid of that too so I get uh, this is just going to be m2 squared over m1 plus m2 now I'll divide both sides by that and I get uh, v2 squared. I could take the square root too. Let's do it all together. Because what the heck, right? Let's live dangerously. Let's just go ahead and take the square root. So I get 2 m1 g h over m2 squared m1 plus m2. Uh, I, I could factor out an m2 here. I'm just trying to think if I need to do that. I mean, this is the right, and I'm on the right track here. Probably get it in a better form, but I'm gonna leave it like that. That's my v2. And then v1, I can go ahead and write that again as this is gonna be m2 over m1 times this. So it's the square root of 2 m1 g h over m2 squared over m1 plus m2. Okay, we, we, we can't leave it at this. We've gotta check stuff, right? Because I don't believe that it could be true because I just want to check. The first thing to do is check the units. So let's check the units for the velocity here to make sure this works. So on the bottom down here, first of all, I have mass plus mass. So that's good. I can't have mass squared plus mass, but I have, this is a mass and that's mass. Kilograms, kilograms. And then I have kilograms up here. So the mass is cancel. Uh, G, I could write that as meters per second squared, multiply by H and I get meters squared per second squared. I take the square root, so that's cool. Okay, so that's the right units. This is the same thing over here because that's the same term and that has no units. So both of them have units of, meter, of meters per second. Now, what if, what if M1 equals M2? Uh, in that case, it seems that the only solution here would be that these two masses would move apart at the same velocity. So M1 would equal to, uh, M, V1 would equal to V2. So if I put M1, I change these all to M, I get M plus m, so I get 2m, those twos cancel and I get square root of gh. And then those are just one, so I get the same thing. So that does work. Now there's one other thing we can check. What if m2 is giant, right? If m2 is giant, then v2 should be very, very small. And so if I put over here, okay, that's true. So if I put in m2, I'm dividing by m2, this, this term gets very small. This term should be go to uh, just the, the block, speed of a block sliding down the plane. Uh, you have to do a little bit of work because you're multiplying by a big number and dividing by a big number. But I think it's okay. I think it's okay. So I think this solution works. Um, and again, this problem, I just want to give a little commercial. We have another way to solve this problem uh, instead of writing it out like this. And we'll do that in, in the near future as part of our classical mechanics course that I'm in and I'm making videos for.